Have you ever heard the phrase, like sands through the hourglass, so are the days of our lives? It's the opening of one of the longest running scripted television shows in the world, Days of Our Lives. I can hear that line and immediately see in my head an hourglass with sand falling, which if you've ever owned an hourglass, you might agree with me that it can be a bit unnerving. The hours and minutes fly by like sands through the hourglass every single day. But there's something about watching the sand fall that puts on full display how fleeting the moments really are. We read in Ecclesiastes 3, there is a time for everything, a time to be born and a time to die. How much do we have left? We don't know and we aren't promised tomorrow. I love how James describes it. James 4:14. 4, Yet you do not know what tomorrow will bring. What is your life? For you are a mist that appears for a little time and then vanishes. I don't know about tomorrow. I'll make plans for it, but only the Lord knows what tomorrow will bring for me. Psalm 139, 16 says, The days ordained for me are written before even one of them came to be. We are still under the curse of death, and the words God spoke to Adam apply to us today. To dust we shall all return. Everybody dies. It's not something we like to think about usually, but King Solomon said in Ecclesiastes 7 that it is good to go to the house of mourning. When we consider death, we are faced with our own sand, our own hourglass, how we are living this life and what's to come in the next. Some dear friends of ours lost their dad not long ago, and they had written a song that was one of their dad's favorites that says, everybody dies, but not everybody lives. I kept thinking back to that song recently as I was reading the fifth chapter of the book of Genesis. Here's why. It's all about the family of Adam. And from verse 3 to 31, we're given basically an obituary column of Adam's children, their children, how many years they lived, and then each section ends with the words, and he died. A story in my study Bible shares about a woman who invited her neighbor to church. She saw the passage being preached that day was Genesis chapter five. She worried a sermon on Adam's family obituary column wouldn't be the best experience for her neighbor. Well, God's word is alive and powerful, see Hebrews 4.12, and it does not return void, see Isaiah 55.11. So no matter where you're reading, God can use it to open your eyes. The woman's neighbor gave his life to Jesus that Sunday morning. It was that sermon and all the and he died moments that made him think about the day the final grain of sand would fall for him. He knew he needed to get right with God. In the house of mourning, do you have peace? Do you know where you will spend eternity? You can. This life is not the end, it's just the beginning. And even if you're still breathing now, apart from Christ, you are dead in your sin. But here's the good news. Jesus wants you to hear this, John 11, 25. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live, even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? Do you believe? You can right now. And it's only in Christ we can boldly say, death, where is your sting? Death, where is your victory? Thanks be to God, he gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. That's the truth. I pray you believe it today because everybody dies, but not everybody lives. I'm Lori Klein.